Welcome to the video. Today we're talking about the Eddington Limit, named after Sir Arthur Eddington, an English astronomer and physicist who first derived the theoretical limit of how much radiation pressure a star could withstand before it would be destroyed. The Eddington Limit is also known as the Eddington Luminosity or the Eddington Mass Accretion Rate. The Eddington Limit was proposed the concept in 1926. The Eddington limit is proportional to the mass of the accreting object, meaning that more massive objects have higher limits. The Eddington limit applies to most astronomical bodies such as stars, black holes, accretion disks, and galaxies. The Eddington limit is not a hard limit and can exceed it temporarily such as during supernova explosions. The Eddington limit is related to the balance between radiation pressure, which pushes outward, and gravity, which pulls inward. The Eddington limit is generally only applicable to stars that are in hydrostatic equilibrium, meaning that the outward pressure of radiation is balanced by the inward pull of gravity. The limit is obtained by setting the outward radiation pressure equal to the inward gravitational force. Both forces decrease by inverse square laws, so once equality is reached, the hydrodynamic flow is the same throughout the star. If an object exceeds the Eddington limit, it will generate radiation that pushes back and prevents further growth. In addition to radiation pressure, other factors can also limit the luminosity of a star, such as convection and magnetic fields. Magnetic fields can modify the radiation pressure and alter the dynamics of the emitting material. In some cases, the Eddington limit can be exceeded temporarily, leading to outbursts of radiation and increased accretion rates. When a star exceeds its Eddington limit, it will become unstable and undergo a series of catastrophic events, such as stellar winds, mass loss, and even supernovae. If a black hole is accreting mass at or near the Eddington limit, it can cause powerful outflows of gas and radiation known as quasars. The Eddington limit can be calculated using the formula L underscore it equals 4 pi g m m underscore p c slash sigma underscore t, where L underscore it is the Eddington luminosity, g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the object, m underscore p is the mass of a proton, c is the speed of light, and sigma underscore t is the Thomson scattering cross section. Thomson scattering describes how photons interact with electrons. The Eddington limit is expressed in units of solar luminosity per solar mass, or L slash M. The luminosity of a source bounded by a surface S may be expressed using the Eddington limit equation, L equals 4 pi GMC slash kappa, where G is the gravitational constant, M is the mass of the central object, C is the speed of light, and kappa is the opacity of the stellar material. The Eddington limit can be used to estimate the mass of a black hole, by observing the radiation emitted by the accreting gas or the luminosity of its accretion disk. Astronomers can use the Eddington limit to estimate the mass of a star by measuring its luminosity and radius. The Eddington limit is a key parameter in the study of gravitational wave sources, such as merging black holes and neutron stars. Some exotic forms of matter, such as quark matter or strange matter, could potentially violate the Eddington limit or have an Eddington limit that is different from that of traditional astrophysical objects. Thank you for watching. Galaxies Next.